You know, video games get more and more lifelike with each passing year. So lifelike, in fact, that some games might be mistaken for real life at this point. Games like the incredibly lifelike AC-130 Gunship Simulator, for example. 2017 is giving 2016 a run for its money when it comes to being crowned the year of fake news. And those damn Russians are at it again with their stability-threatening propaganda. Yes, the Russian Ministry of Defense has used a video game screenshot as evidence that the US is in fact cooperating with famed dickheads ISIS. On Tuesday, the Russian MOD tweeted three times in different languages with pictures they claim to be proof of American cooperation with Islamic State, saying, quote, The Ministry of Defense shows irrefutable evidence that US are actually covering ISIS combat units to recover their combat capabilities, redeploy and use them to promote American interests in the Middle East. Irrefutable evidence. <laughs> I'm convinced. <laughs> The tweets were swiftly taken down though, and this might be why. One of the tweets showed a screenshot from a 2015 trailer for the video game AC-130 Gunship Simulator. The MOD had captioned the picture, dating it as November the 9th, 2017, and saying, quote, ISIS automobile convoy leaving Abu Kamal for Syrian Iraqi border. One interesting note though, Russian TV news networks reported on this as actual news before the tweets were removed. Not only would like, they, they make up this, they found this like random screenshot, but they'd actually dated it and like like located Made it up as a well. backstory <laughs> irrefutable yeah oh. and then the russian tv networks are like news this is news and uh, i guess reported and uh, not refuted either which is interesting this actually isn't the first time video game footage has been mistaken for real life footage either russian government funded news channel rt broadcasted a screenshot from metal gear solid 5 the phantom pain three years ago as part of a political report on African soldiers. In 2013, a Danish channel used an Assassin's Creed screenshot during a news report on Syria. And in the UK, ITV once showed a clip of Armour 2 during a report on a Libya-funded IRA attack. Maybe the pick of the bunch, though, is when BBC News used the UNSC logo from Halo when talking about the United Nations Security Council. The difference with all these, though, obviously, is that they weren't intentionally used to spread misinformation, were they? The Russian Ministry of Defence. Yes, so this is funny. I mean, they were. It's, it's funny because they were trying to be misleading and they get caught out by the most bone headed mistake that you can make. Just like Googling AC 130 pictures and then getting the screenshot from a game, which at face value, if you're scrolling through the feed of pictures, I can see how it would blend in. But you like take a slightly closer look and you can see that it's like bad graphics textures and not actually just that's what AC-130 cameras look like. The fact that this happens so often though, kind of a bit of a compliment to video games isn't it? The fact that the BBC thought that the uh, graphics, art, the artwork for the UNSC Marine Corps from Halo was the actual United uh, Nations Security Council <laughs> logo. That's beautiful, that's beautiful, but the actual gameplay footage from Armour and stuff, yeah. it's quite cool that it's getting <laughs> the, the, the news network actually thought that would pass as actual combat footage. And also in the news, Call of Duty World War 2 is now running dedicated servers for its multiplayer portion. Sledgehammer Games tweeted to confirm the news on Wednesday saying quote, status update, global dedicated servers are currently live on all platforms. The move follows almost two weeks of connectivity issues for players online using the game's peer-to-peer -peer servers. Problems included host migration, which froze the game if the host player quit, and poor hit detection and even loss of progression for some players. But Eurogamer reports that some players are still complaining of continued issues with the post-match lobby, which seems to struggle when it comes to parties of players. The problems with COD's multiplayer don't end with their servers either, with widespread reports that the headquarters social space, which is meant to support 48 players, is a lonely place. And also that much anticipated COD points currency have been held back as Sledgehammer focuses on the game's online issues. Not much anticipated was, you know, uh, sarcasm for any Americans who might be watching. It's, uh, it, yeah, this is... <laughs> <laughs> Not only did you burn COD there, you burned the whole of I'm America. I'm sorry, I'm well sorry. Done. Laughing at my own f***ing joke as well. What a loser. <laughs> So this is a sorry state of affairs. They're having to delay the microtransactions. That is how bad the online connectivity issues are, uh, are for this. But I guess that is, is kind of good in the sense that they don't want to put in something in there that will, will will piss people off. If the microtransactions and everything are working fine, but the actual gameplay isn't. So they've, they've done well to spot that that would annoy people at the very least. And they've at least focused on this actual connectivity stuff first. And it's good that, they, you know, dedicated servers is something all COD players want, right? Is that That's a thing. Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, as a PC player, that's what you on dedicated server you don't you don't want none of this like peer-to-peer -peer nonsense yeah. but um, dedicated service is something that um, it kind of it kind of turned me off from the whole franchise uh, a few uh, 
good for years ago now. Modern Warfare was the last time they had proper dedicated servers and then they were like, no, um, we're doing console, we want there's more money in console, so let's serve all the console players, let's make it easier peer to peer. And then it just did basically a, a big thumb, two fingers up to the um, PC player base, which is when I completely lost the franchise. So apparently now they're using a mixture of peer to peer and dedicated servers. So it's not entirely all the way there, back to being as it, as good as it used to be and stuff. But you know, I guess that's it's good, it's good news. It's funny how they held back the microtransactions though, because they didn't want to take the shine off all the Battlefront 2 yeah, microtransactions. Yeah. They wanted them to get their, you know, day, yeah. day in the sun yeah. with all their microtransaction bullshit. They, they would. Yeah, they yeah. Did, yeah. I mean, obviously. And in other COD news, players have been enjoying some double XP in the multiplayer since the game launched. That's right, Sledgehammer Games didn't actually forget to turn on the feature during the planned double XP weekend over the last weekend. It had been on the whole time anyway by mistake, and players just didn't notice. When players pointed out that they didn't feel as though they were earning any extra XP over the weekend, Michael Condry of Sledgehammer Games took to Twitter to clear things up. He revealed that double XP in COD World War II had been active since the game's launch. Just a little reminder, that is almost two whole weeks. This, of course, was an accident on Sledgehammer Games' behalf, and Condry confirmed the Double XP weekend would be extended to Tuesday. Players, however, weren't happy with this news. Many already felt that the progression in the game was a slow grind. Now we know that it's been a slow grind with Double XP switched on the whole time. Christ knows how bad it's going to feel when it's switched off. Uh, this grindy multiplayer thing is a new thing. I mean, this last, I mean, Shadow of War with the, you know, with that 10, 20 hour end game or whatever at the, at the end, Star Wars Battlefront 2 with the grind to get the heroes. Now COD, it's a slow grind to just progress through the game. I mean, the common thread through all these is loot boxes and microtransactions. However, COD is supposed to be uh, cosmetic stuff, right? So it's not really affecting yeah. gameplay. True, but <clears throat> games as a service, that's what this is. Games yeah. as a service. It's great, right? No, this is shit. This is absolute bollocks. They're drawing out the end game for you. They're making things like as grindy as possible so you keep playing as long as possible. So you're more likely to be faced with the possibility of buying a microtransaction. Yeah. Games as a service, everybody. F***ing hallelujah. Let's nuke the whole f***ing industry now, Mike. Let's just f***ing wow. be done with it. Jesus. Let's use some of the fake screenshots and just say that the f***ing game industry's gone. Look, game industry's gone, we yeah. nuked it. Dead. Uh, it's fun while it lasted, though. So that's it, games industry's dead. What do you make of this latest shocking development? Let us know down in the comments. Just remember to like the video if you did enjoy it, and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this every single day. You can check out that video right there, right now, if you want, and there's a link to Patreon if you want to support the channel. See you next time.